Although Christ was in every bit God, equal to the Father, and most Christians don't realize, Jesus Christ was the Creator. God the Father created nothing. The Bible says in at least three places, or that's off the top of my head, there are many more, but there's three scriptures I can give you off the top of my head, where it says that Jesus Christ created all things, and all things are upheld by the power of His Word. God the Father created nothing. Yes, I have heard the disturbing and utterly heretical recording of what David Nathan said, and he actually did say that. And I've also heard the reports from people who are women who were at her meetings that she did say that man is made in the image or image and likeness of, of, of Adam, in the image of Adam. Uh, I have not heard any recordings of this. I don't know if any are publicly available, or if they are, they're controlled by GV 24-7, or their own facilities at Studio Scotland or something. I have not heard the proof that she said it, although I do believe the testimony of the women who told me she said it. But I have to qualify it. I cannot prove she said what she said, even though I do believe what the women told me, um, who, who were at the, at the conference or the women's meeting that she had where she said these things i personally do believe them but i cannot prove it and there is a possibility that they may be lying even though i don't believe they are lying i know them to be godly women on the other hand david nathan i've heard let me begin with his utterly heretical statement what he is saying is the false Christology of an ancient heretical sect called Sabellianism. We would know it as Jesus only, oneness Pentecostalism. Now, I don't think that David Nathan is a oneness Pentecostal, that he is a Sabellian, but he has Sabellian theology where there's this idea that Jesus did it. Don't look to the Father, don't look to the Spirit, just look to Jesus. He's not a Sabellian, but he's misinterpreting the scriptures concerning the creation in the same way Sabellians do, at least in significant part. Now let's understand what the Word of God tells us concerning the creation and the role of Jesus in it. I'm reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6. Yet for us there is our one God, the Father, from whom are all things, and we exist for him, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we exist through him. We exist from the Father through the Son. When we look at the creation narrative in Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2 and chapter 3 from the perspective of the New Testament and interpret the creation narrative of Genesis in light of the New Testament, we plainly see all three persons of the Godhead were involved in the creation. The Hebrew term Elohim, plural, is used. God says, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. The Spirit of God was moving on the face of the water, of the deep. Okay. Yet he does this through the Logos. Through the Logos. Now this is another one of David Nathan's errors that I will explain. David Nathan takes this view. Again, I wouldn't argue or make a dispute concerning it normally, but because of the heretical doctrines he's been teaching, we have to look at it carefully. He says that the Logos is the printed word or the written word, and the Rhema is a personal word. Many people, particularly Charismatics and Pentecostals, take that view, but Many Greek scholars, many Greek scholars do not. Uh, it is non-scholarly people that have basically propagated that view. Essentially, Logos refers to the Word of God as a person. 
the Lord Jesus, the eternal Son of God. While rhema simply means word. <laughs> Logos is the word of God as a person, where rhema simply means word. Now this idea where we take the word of God, Logos is written and rhema is personal, people say that and they apply those terms that way, but linguistically you cannot be sure by any stretch of the imagination that's what it means in fact i'm quite sure it does not mean that although i do believe in personal words they must be subordinated to the written word the written word being jesus in print or the son of god in print the same as we see all three persons of the godhead engaged in the creation in genesis we see all three involved in the new creation in John, born of the water and the spirit. Again, the water has the spirit of God moving upon it. The father through the son, the father gives them to me. Um, no one comes to the father but through me. This We interpret the creation in light of the new creation. The new creation helps us understand the creation. We always interpret the Old Testament, the Tanakh, in light of the New Testament revelation of the Lord Jesus. Mr. Nathan does not do this. To understand this further, again, we have 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6. It is clear, from the Father, by the Son, through him. Let us look at John chapter 1, the Gospel of St. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. In Hebrew, it would be the Var Adonai, in Aramaic, the Mamra. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through him. And apart from him, Nothing came into being that has not come into being. All things through him. In Greek, it is panta de oto. Panta de oto. Panta, all. The preposition de oto. Oto, which is genitive singular. Oto, get the word auto, or like uh, autoimmune or something of this nature. Okay, oto. It is genitive. Genitive means it modifies another. Now, in English, it's hard to understand the genitive because we have a possessive case, okay? We have a possessive. Bible translators will often translate something in the genitive in Greek with an apostrophe to make it possessive in English, because that's the closest way you can translate the main idea. It's not something that has an exact equivalent in English. Because we have a possessive, we don't use the genitive per se as Greek does. So they, they add an apostrophe or something like this very often when they translate a noun that's in the genitive, the oto. But it must modify another. Who's the other? Well, obviously, it's his father. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 8. Here we see a description of Jesus as co-creator and his father as creator making it through his eternal son. Verse 22. Jesus is now speaking as the son of God before he was known as Jesus, in the Old Testament in the first person. The Lord possessed me at the beginning of his way. He was always there. Before his works of old, from everlasting I was established. Jesus was eternally existent. From the beginning, from the earliest times of the earth, when there was no depths, I was brought forward, or brought forth, Genesis 1. Okay. When there were no springs abounding with water. Before me mountains were settled. Before the hills I was brought forth, 
no mountains, no hills. Well, he had not yet made the earth and the fields, nor the first dust of the world. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he inscribed the circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he springs of the deep and they became fixed, when he set for the sea its boundary, so that the sea would not transgress his command. When he marked out the foundation of the earth, when he did it, when he did it, when he did it, notice Jesus keeps saying the Father did it. Then I was next to him as a master workman. I was his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in the world, his earth, having my delight in the sons of men. Now, therefore, O Lord, listen to me, for blessed are they who keep my ways. Heed instruction and be wise. Do not neglect it. Blessed is the man who listens to me, to Jesus, watching daily at my gates, waiting at my doorposts. For he who finds me, finds life, that's the Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus, the Son of God, and obtains favor from the Lord. But he who sins against me injures himself. All who hate me love death. Now he takes his delight in the sons of men. Why? Because as we'll look at in a moment in response to the second half of the question, the sons of men are made on his image and likeness. Much the same as we would take delight in our children and grandchildren. We would see properties of ourselves in them and take delight in them as a loving father, as a loving procreator. That reflects the way God looks upon humans as the creator, wanting to be their loving father. Notice the logos, the devar, the son of God keeps saying, when he did it, when he did it, when he did it. Jesus is, we might say, co-creator. It was done through him as the Davar, as the Logos. He was the agent. The heresy taught by David Nathan that the Father created nothing is absurd. Again, he is using a Sabellian hermeneutic. It's the same argument of the Jesus-only people. It discounts the place of the Father as such, only focusing on the Son. When in Genesis 1, 2, 3, the creation narratives, we see all three persons of the triunity of the Godhead engaged in the creation as they are in the new creation. Now, our faith is apostolic, not patristic. I've said that many times. We get our faith from the teaching of the apostles, not from the church fathers, even though some of the pre-Nicene church fathers said true things. We don't get our doctrines from the councils of the church other than the apostolic council in Acts 15. The later councils are not a basis of doctrine. The credos or creeds, even though they say true things and uphold biblical truths, such as the Nicene Creed or the uh, Athanasian Creed. Well, they say true things and they even defend scriptural truths from certain heresies that were prevalent at the time when Greek philosophy began invading the church and distorting a scriptural understanding of God and of the nature of Christ and Christology. The creeds and credos say certain things, but they are patristic. One exception the Apostles' Creed. That was not patristic, it was apostolic. It came from the Apostles. It's what the Apostles themselves taught. It was known originally as the line of faith. People didn't have copies of the Scriptures all over the place. Much of the New Testament had not yet been written. Certainly not collated into such a way as it could be put into a codex. But what people did know was the line of faith, the essential fundamental teaching of the apostles. They'd have 
maybe a copy of Paul's letter, a copy of Peter's epistle, maybe a copy of Mark or a James, but it was not collated yet into a literary unit. But they had the line of faith. This is where we get the Apostles' Creed. It's not the Patristic Creed, it's not the Church Fathers, it's the Apostles. And it opens with, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. That is not patristic, it is apostolic. The early church was taught by the apostles, the Father was the creator. Who's the liar? Who's the false teacher? Who's the deceiver? Is it the authors of the New Testament? Or is David Nathan one of those who Timothy says is deceived and deceives others? Deceiving and being deceived. Proverbs 8. We know this is Jesus. He who believes in me, you're going to find eternal life. You obtain favor from the Lord. Blessed is the man who listens to me, the one who finds me. And he says, when he did it, when he did it, when he did it, referring to his father. Panta de Otto. The father did it through the son. As he so often does, David Nathan is not just teaching error. He's teaching fundamental heresy. To say God the Father is not the creator? This is not simply false. It borders on the blasphemous. Now let's continue. My delight was in the sons of men, because we are imagio dei beings made in God's image and likeness. These statements attributed by women to Deborah Mendelaws taught at her women's events that were made in the image of Adam, were created in the image of Adam. No, 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 no. We are created in the image of God. Adam is a procreator. We are procreated in the image of God by Adam. The template is divine, not human. What that false teaching does is takes man from being theopomorphic and degrades him into being something anthropomorphic. When you say man is procreated, by Adam and his descendants. In the image and likeness of God, Magio Dei being, that is theopomorphic man. When you say that man is made or created in the image and likeness of Adam, that is anthropomorphic. What she is actually teaching is, some, is the doctrine of the Mormons. Now, I'm not saying she's a Mormon, but she's teaching the same thing they teach. The Mormons teach that God, the Father, Elohim, was Adam, and that man is made in the image and likeness of Adam. She's actually teaching a Mormon doctrine. She may be too ignorant to know it, but she's teaching what the Mormons teach. No, we are not anthropomorphic. We are theopomorphic. We are only procreated by Adamic agency. We are created by divine agency. If this is indeed Deborah Manilow's teaching at Studio Scotland and GV 24-7, if these women who came to Moriel are telling the truth, and they're not lying, and I don't think they're lying, if this is what she taught, that we are made or created, fashioned in the image of Adam, please show me where. Show me one verse anywhere in the Word of God that teaches it. Now, we're in the character of fallen Adam. We're in the character of fallen Adam when we're born. That's why we must be born again and be conformed to the character of the second Adam, which is Jesus, 
But there's not one verse anywhere. Not one passage, not a hint that were made in the image of Adam. If these statements were actually made by Deborah Menelaus, as reported by these women, and again, I don't have a recorder, recording of it, if she actually made these statements, if these women are telling the truth who are at her meetings, she's teaching an error that is Mormon. That's Latter-day Saints. It's completely false. Completely false. Both of these issues deal with the creation. And they are both entirely false perspectives of the creation. Neither one are scriptural. In fact, they are both anti-scriptural. Thank you so much for your question. My name is James Jacob Pratt. God bless.